Okay, when we left off, we were talking about menus and stuff like that. We were going to go into a templates. Now, I'm going to assume that you've got some training in your vanilla AutoCAD on how to set up templates and especially how to set up your layer styles, your layer settings, your text styles, how to work with those and, and, and build your own text styles and dimension styles, plot style tables, the name pages, you should know how to work with all that so you can set up your template um, based on a, you know, a vanilla CAD. And what I'm going to show you is some of the things that you're going to need to do or that you can do um, to set up a, your template for MEP, drawing ductwork and piping plumbing. Basically, after you set up your template for your text and your layers and all that stuff, then you want to come into Format, Style Manager, and there's a couple of things that you're going to want to change in here. And it's going to be under Documentation, Objects, Label Curves are the big thing. And I'm going to open up, there's my template. When you're working in here, you can take this and you can filter out some of these things. I, I never do it. But we can do it real quick just to show you how it, how it works. Um, we're working in, this is, this is the drawing I'm working in right now, which would be my future template or a template I would be working on. And this is another drawing if I wanted to steal some objects from it or steal some information or properties from it, I could do so. So we'll take this and we'll go documentation objects and we're going to filter those out. We'll just filter out the labor, label curves, curve styles. So that's all it's going to show up in those two two drawings. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier to work with if you're trying to um, take stuff from one drawing to another. As you can see in mine, I have it pretty customized to where I have my own duct size, my own cut length, center of pipe. There's quite a few in here. I kept some of the standards in here and put a little Z in front of them so that they populate down at the bottom. Um, when you go to choose them inside of properties or, or anywhere else. What you're going to want to do is you want to change your, you want to come to this label curve and duck size is the big one right there. You want to create one of those for yourself and you're going to want to have it choose the um, object properties. You're going to want to come over here and you, after you've created your own text styles, you'll find them in here and you can name them whatever you want and then you can come in here and you could add some uh, prefixes and suffixes to the lines we we just come in here we change this to a small x um, I have one in here for oval uh, this might not be in this drawing but I have one also that's for oval that has the forward slash in it uh, and what that's going to do is it's going to say 40 slash 20 instead of the 40 x 20 and then you basically you have your, for your round pipe you'll have your your diameter your percent percent C and then your gap your gap will give you a quarter of an inch um, it's a break line and I'll show you that in a second um, let's change that just so we, I'll change it to four for right now you can see the difference um, And that's that's about all you want to change in there. And this is where it forces in the center and all that. And I just leave it at none, and it just goes right into the center. Um, you really don't need to have it change. Uh, display properties. And it's a label over a curve. I can have that go onto a layer called um, for my medium pressure duct. I don't use it anymore because it just it's it's too complicated to get it to uh, get it to work. Um, I was all, I was really trying to get it to where each um, each duct would have its own. Um, accompanying layer text or text in layer but it, it's it's not working so I, I just leave that the way it is I actually could just uncheck that be nice if they would make that simple it makes it easier when you go to move stuff big groups of stuff um, 
and especially when you uh, export to AutoCAD. All right, well, that's basically what you want to do with those. And let's see, we're in drawing one. Let's see. Let's go ahead and change one of those in drawing one here. Duck size. LS. And let's just go to standard and see what that does. We got that set up. Those suffixes. I don't know if that's going to give me a. I don't. I don't put inch marks on on my duck, but let's see if that works. And I don't know if it does. I think it's only going to put it after the the twenty, and that would put it before the forty, so it wouldn't work. Um. Display settings. My block. I'm just going to leave that the way it is because it like I said it doesn't work that well. Click OK. I'll uncheck that. Click Apply. And we will click OK. Now, these aren't, these are standard duct. And we can change, let's just change one of them. Come in here. And if your label curves are the wrong type, you can just quickly come in here and change it to duck size. And there we have it. See, it did that. You can see it's a different textile. And it should look like your text that you wanted. Um, the way you get these to change for your routing, as you can see, when we're when we're routing here, it's going to put them in. Automatically. But it's going back to that duck standard. So what you would want to do here is come in here to duck preferences. Oh, that was the wrong one. Wasn't it? Duct preferences. And label styles. These are, you can use two. You can use two different ones, um, and I'll show you what happens when you use two, though. Because if you're going to use duck lengths for detailing, then uh, you, you really can't use two. So we'll go back to here, and we'll look for that duck size label curve, and the number of labels, space evenly, one. You want to leave that there. And we could just try something here. I don't have a duck length in here. I'll have to go to my template. Or, I mean, uh, yeah, I don't have a duck length in here. Which, I mean, you could put flow arrows, I guess. Whatever you wanted to. But you can play with that and see how you like it. If you're, if you're not drawing in duck sections and you're not sectioning it off for, for lengths, you could probably put something else in there system label. I think that'll give you like uh, the EXE for the exhaust and uh, repeat every four feet. Let's give that a try. Yeah. That's not working. So you see now it's going ahead and it's giving you that, that curve that we just created. Let's put one in the middle of every even. Let's get rid of that. Uh, duck preferences. We'll get rid of this. You can see how it works. And it's creating that label that you were, that you just created. Okay. And we'll go to my template, and I'll show you what happens when you try to section it off and use a cut length. Um, where are we at here? Here we go. And here we go. Okay, my 
it's got cut length and auto route, which is not right. I'm going to change that real quick. Preferences. We want duck size. And I'm going to go ahead and put this duck length in here. Duck length. And I want it to repeat like every 20 feet. That's what I tried to do anyway. Let's we'll see what happens here. You can see that looks pretty good. I mean, what happens here is with your cut lengths, and AutoCAD needs to do something about it. It it just doesn't uh, doesn't populate until you go through this. You have to go through the extended data, find your duck work, hit that little button down there, which is your object properties. Make sure that. And both those will be checked. It's fine. Um, duct object is uh, is what you want. Click OK. Then you have to regen. But then see now you've got your lengths in there. But what happens is when you section it off, so we'll do 56 and a quarter inch. Click OK. Now you've got nothing in there. No duck lengths at all. And I learned a while back to just I all I do now is I draw it, and that's the reason that that was drawn with duck lengths in it. I don't put duck sizes in there anymore because of that right there. And when you section it off, you get a piece of duct in there, or duct size in every one of those. You don't want that. So the way I set it up is to have that off and the duct length. And I have to go through all that stuff to get it to show the duct lengths, but it's still faster than doing it by hand or manually. So now we can just go in here, we can go duck length, click OK, click apply, and we can do that to the whole thing. Uh, you, you, got, you can't do a fitting. Duck length, click apply, and then you have to just apply those properties to it. Sign, extended data, okay, and region. And you have your duck lengths. And you could come in and you could put duck sizes and once you get one inside the drawing, then what you do is you come in here and you check your label and you just click where you want it. need to change that to the style you want. Duck size. That's that. JPK duck size. And you set it up like that and And we'll go into this more when we start showing you, when we start drawing some duck systems and some detailing, I'll go into this a little more. But then you just always, if you want to add one of these, and you, now you just hit Add Selected and you can put them rather quickly. 
wherever you want them. And of course you would do something like this. 20 by 40, and you move this one over, make it a little neater. Okay, so now we're going back into the template, um, setting up your template. When you get out of that duck thing, you kind of got off on a tangent there. Um, so when you come in here, you're going to work with your documentation objects, um, label curves, and you're going to want to set up some of these things to customize and you're customized, say for instance, the duck length. That cut length is not out of the box. Um, on the blog, I'll point you to a video um, done by someone else, um, Kyle B. over at uh, Autodesk, on how to how to make that. But basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to come in here, you're going to make a new one, and you can make new ones. You can start from like a standard or you could start from anywhere say if this duck size has got some properties that you want or bottom of ducks got properties that you want um, you could start from that click copy and then just paste it up here and you'll have it'll come in here I'll say duck size 2 and I'll do it down here in this one I don't want to screw mine up duck size objects documentation objects duck curve Let's say you wanted to create a new one based on duck size. Copy. Come in here. Paste. And now you're going to have another one that says 2. Duck size 2. And what's going to happen is everything that was based on that is going to have a 2. So you're probably going to have to purge these out. But property set property data and property set definitions is where you're going to get some of these um, associative properties to these label curves and uh, like I said I'll point you to that video um, and it will help you understand that what you're what you're going to be doing in here a little bit more than what I can explain to you because I don't do it that often and I can't really remember how I did it um, but you can create you can get kind of creative um, um, right now I'm trying to work on one for radius uh, you know a tag that shows a radius fitting um, I haven't been very successful with it but I haven't spent that much time with it either but um, That's how you change your label curves. That's how you get them to work, and that's how you get them to apply to your duct. Um, HVAC objects is something else you're going to want to look at. And then you're going to come in here. You have all of these things in here, and I mean, I don't use, but if you show you my template, HVAC objects. You can get rid of some of this thing. I mean, all I have is your basic exhaust, makeup, and I wouldn't even use that. I'd get rid of that. And I will. I don't know why it's in there. Outdoor air, return, standards always in there, and low pressure and medium pressure. And then if you have a job that uh, has something different in there, you can come in and create one. Um, it's the same with uh, these other ones down here. Uh, let's say if you wanted to create um, an exhaust 2 or something, you just copy and paste that. And now you got exhaust 2. And you can rename it. And we'll go in here. We'll go into these properties here in a second. Um, and then you could give it all the properties that you wanted. And it would then populate your, your routing box your dialog box and it makes it easier to to um, you know choose some of those things you don't have as many options I know AutoCAD loves to give you options 
um, sometimes painfully so. But um, I'll show you. Let's go. To, let's go to the one out of the box first. So that's one you're going to see. And we're going to HVAC objects, duct systems, exhaust. And we'll just go through this exhaust, for example. And this is the name of it. This is the way it's going to show up in your in your dialog box. Um, this is the way it will abbreviate if you choose to abbreviate, and that you can find that in your label curves. Um, duct. It's always going to be in there. Layer keys. If you want to get into changing your layer uh, names and styles. This is where your rise and drop go, and I think we looked at that yesterday, where you're changing, that's, your, that's where your, if your duck is going up or down, it's going to have a, uh, a symbol there, and that's where that is, and you could change those if you wanted to, of course you always want exhaust that looks like exhaust, but um, I don't know what that is, exclude 2D section, I don't do sections with uh, MEP and in here is where you, you can change your layer colors in here globally so right now it's doing it by the drawing default which is your AIA drawing sets and, and, and whatnot and let's close out of this for a second and click OK Let's go back to that other drawing, and there you go. So in other words, this is what the color for exhaust is out of the box, and you could change some of this on that in, in those properties that we just looked at. HVAC objects, ductwork, exhaust, and you could come in here. And like I said yesterday, if you ever got hidden line issues, if you're drawing duct and all of a sudden the hidden line stops showing, it's probably that this got turned off. You can come in there and look at that. Um, I find that that's always that. Either that or the layers change, and you could change the layer if, if you wanted to. I don't see why not. It works pretty well. But um, this contour, if you wanted to change your, your, your duct color so it always runs in green, you could do that. And contour details, I believe. No connectors. That's what you want to change. Well, let's just leave that by block, and I'll show you what it does when you don't do that. Uh, and you could change your lining. Right now, it, it, it looks like it's going to by block. We'll see what that does. And here. Click OK. Click. So now see that you've got that checked. It's it's going to go by the override, and that's all of your your exhaust systems are going to be like that. Um, see what happens when you don't do that connector. You get that. Now I don't know why anybody would want to draw like that, but so that's why you got to do that connector. And I think there's something to do with the rise too. Change elevations on that. Okay, well, let's just go back to what we were talking about, and we'll, we'll look at that later. So that's what you're going to have to do. There's a couple of things in here. You have to just kind of play with it and get it the way you want it. Um, we'll come back to Style Manager, HVAC Objects, Duct, Exhaust, and we'll go back in there. I'll change that connector to green, and then you should have 
when we get back there, which it should, everything should, the connector should turn green. All right, um, and it's the same thing for all of these ducts in here. Um, and I don't know what this does either. This has something to do with um, project standards, synchronization, which I don't do any of that. My template is my standard. Um, so again, that's, that's basically what you want to change for your template. And that way it makes it a little bit easier to set it up. Um, and, you know, it's going to change from project to project. Uh, now let's go and look at... Um, duck preferences and that's something that's going to change rapidly mostly all you know all the time when you're drawing but you could at least set your template up so that it, um, when you open up a new drawing it's it's um, the way you like it uh, so see now our connectors changed uh, let's see here We could go into HVAC. There's a couple different ways to get to it, but duct, duct preferences, and your routing. Um, I would just leave that center to center because you can change that on the fly. It seems to work very good that way. Um, angle, you want to sit there, or you could do it in fractions if you want, but. Angle is probably what you just leave it like that. Now you could, uh, you can actually have it draw um, automatically. Do cut lengths, duck cut lengths, um, and if you wanted, I have some of the basic sizes in here that I use. Um, but if you wanted a new one, you just type it in there, and it'll populate that box. And problem is though is if you type the wrong number I don't know how to get rid of them I'm sure there's a way but I haven't found it yet uh, like that 58 I think I typed in there by accident 60 is the one that comes out of the box there's your angles that your elbows will draw at and 15 that's when you're using the compass 45 that's pretty basic I, I wouldn't mess with that um, if you wanted to have a custom one in there, you could 22 and a half or something like that. You could probably add 22 and a half. That would be a good one. Uh, duck size. And you could apply liner to it. And insulation thickness, which I never use. But you put your liner in there. You could put one inch or two inch. Um... And we just talked about the label curves. Um, basically, the best way to do it is just leave it at duck size and leave it at, at one. Um, if you wanted to put, um, if you wanted to play with this and see if you could get it to do something that you like, you could probably do it. Um, veins. I use veins. I don't use flanges. Um, for the simple reason is they don't work. Um, this thing cost me a lot of money. I, I did a project, turned it on one day, or opened the file up one day, and all of half the flanges were showing, half of them weren't. And, um, Autodesk couldn't explain it to me. They couldn't help me fix it. So I don't use them anymore. I don't know if, it, if it's changed in 09 or not, but I'm not even going to get involved with it. I don't need them. So. Um, but you could give it a shot if you like. Um, here's your flex uh, segments. I usually just use that one right there, but you can play with that. One's just kind of straight. One's a an arc, and then one's a spline. And then you got different types of looks of flex duck, and you can play with those. Um, I seem to like that one. I think kind of looks good when it's plotted. Uh, I don't know what the path means. I just leave that the way it is out of the box. I've never touched it. Um, and here is your parts for your auto routing. Um, basically what I do is I'll come in here to round, rectangular, and oval and set them up. 
the way out. You could go in here and you could pick your crosses that you would want to use. I don't know why they have all this, some of this stuff you'd never ever build, ever. Um, you could probably delete some of that stuff out of your catalog, but um, it's not too difficult to get around. But, uh, and I, I just never use a cross anytime, so um, I can't remember the last time I even bought one or built one. But we'll go back down here to the duct. It's pretty standard. It's all you can. Elbows. You could pick your five gore, six gore, um, whatever you wanted for auto routing. Um, I just use like a one and a half times radius. Um, smooth for my rounds. Where is that? It's in here somewhere. There it is. And your flex duct. Takeoffs. We have our own custom takeoffs. Well, we have so we have some different lengths, um, but you can pick a, a a takeoff that you like to use. T's the same thing. Transitions. I, I just leave it like with that one, and then if I want to modify it, I modify it um, after it's drawn. Uh, rectangular duck, it's just the same thing. You got a few different elbows. You got this one right here for squares, and then you got a couple of different radius. And if you would, you know, one and a half time would be your standard. Um, let's just do that in there and show you how that works. And takeoffs. We have a bunch of different takeoffs in here. We we draw a 12 inch standard. Tees. It's kind of rough. Tees in here really don't have a lot of a depth to them. Like that one there, I would never build. That there, I would do. That there, I would probably yeah maybe. If that's you just leave that as standard. If you want to f f change it later, I just leave that transition as standard. I'll go into transitions later. They're not that, they're not that fun. They're uh, very time consuming. If you want it for detailing, um, placeholder. I don't mess with that. And leave, we'll just leave oval the way that is, because um, you can change all this stuff. If you don't like it, you can just come in here and find it. It's kind of limited, this oval, exactly what you can use. But it's just, it works the same way. And I don't ever use that or the placeholder. I don't even know what it means. And you got connection types. Yeah, I wouldn't even mess with that because you can change that on the fly as far as your template goes. And this here is, you know, I, I do everything with a, a takeoff. Um, but you could use T's if you're running some spiral. And this is where, this is nothing you need to change for template wise. This is stuff you would change on the fly as you're drawing. Look like okay. So now that you're going to start doing some auto routing, and we change that radius, and so now you should have a radius. And you can see we got some flex in there, or excuse me, some liner. Now you could take and go back. I, I, I can show you how ours is. Ours looks a little neater and cleaner. I'm coming in here. So you're going to start a duct. And say so you wanted to put liner in it, you could just click right there, you can get right to your to your uh, duck preferences. Go in here, click your one inch liner. I don't know if exhaust duck has even has liner. It doesn't, it's turned off. So we'll have to change the style. Come in here, we'll go uh, medium pressure. Make sure we got liner turned on. And it's got a little gap, and it's also a little off, off uh, a different layer color. And 
Let me do that again with the return. You can see that a little better. And you get the little gap. And the way you can do that is in your style manager. Make sure you see objects. And since we were working with exhaust, I'll just go ahead and do exhaust. And that is in your display properties. Come down here to lining. And you just pick a color that you like. I like something like that. Click OK. And then you could do your line type as where's the dash at? Hidden. Hidden two or hidden one. Hidden two looks good. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you, this has probably got to be set. The line scale. Let's just test it and see. If not, you have to come back and change it if, to give it a gap you want. Click OK. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so this should have a, a line or two at now. Yeah, you could tighten up that gap a little bit, probably do it 0 0.5. But then you got the idea. Let's see what else you need to know about rounding duck or setting it up for properties. I think, I mean, for your template, that's about all you need to do. And then you'll probably add stuff as you get along. Um, we could look at some of the different types of duck real quick. And then we'll next video we'll start drawing stuff and detailing it and how to draw up and down and fittings and and whatnot. Um, basically, where we looked up there, that's where all your things, are, all your your ducks going to be. And if you look over here in mine, where I got it set up, when I do that, now I just have those those options. It limits my options, and then so. Uh, and then you got your flanged, slip and drive, and all this other stuff that I don't understand. I just use the flange and slip and drive. Um, let's see here. This is your elevation. If you want to start your elevation at a certain height, um, you could do that. Um, and I do sometimes. You, you could set this to top or bottom. And I believe that you're you're going to start your duck at say 12 feet. And we'll do that at the bottom. It's usually where you start it. 12 feet at the bottom. And then you can come in here. You can offset that. Um, I never play with that, but um, you can just just type some numbers in there and draw and see what it does. Um, I can't remember exactly what it does. Um, this here you're going to use. We'll get into that when we're start when we start drawing ducks. You want to go up, down. Um, there's obviously your width and your height, and that's it. That's basically all that stuff. So we'll just go like that. Click OK, and it should have drawn that at 12 feet. It started at 11:11. Okay, well that's close enough. I don't. I usually just come in here, get it where I want it, put a tag on it. And well, it is 11. It's 12 feet. It's probably 11 and. And 
768s or some stupid thing like that. So that's basically what I do. I'll come in here and I'll just start a duct anywhere. I wanted to start a duct. Um, if it's not coming off a piece of equipment, if it's coming off a piece of equipment, it's already got it set up, so it should just draw with that. Then I'll just add a tag to it. get it started and if I wanted it to go down just hit move 0 comma 0 comma minus say 14 inches and then say so now it's running at 10 10 that's where I want it and I just go from there and you know most of the time you'll be trying to set that right underneath a piece of steel or something and, uh, I mean, you could take and actually populate like this box with different heights. I mean, it's, I don't know how people draw like that because, I mean, on my, on most of my jobs, there's just so many different elevations that um, you could populate this box up in your, uh, and I'll show you where, um, where it's got preset elevations in it, um, and you can use that, but. Let's see, it's in options. I think we looked at this yesterday. And then here you could add new ones. There's one in here that says add. new ones. You can come in here and name them, give them heights, new elevation, six feet. Uh, new elevation two would be 12 feet. And we'll get rid of that one. Click apply, click OK. And then when you came in here to draw, you got your new elevations. Elevation one, six feet. Elevation two. I mean, if that works for you, put that back to center. There's too many variables on the stuff that I work with. I don't know. And basically, that's it. I mean, you've got your different styles of duct and different fittings and stuff, and we'll go into that as we draw. Um, we'll use all those different fittings that um, that are practical in there. Um, this little lock button here comes in handy when you're trying to... Um, well, I'll show you that in a, in a subsequent... We'll, we'll, we'll get into situations where we're going to use that. Um, so that's it. That's that's for your. That's how you. Get, that's what you need to set up in your template, and it's a little bit about the duct systems. Um, the next video we will tackle. We'll start drawing duct systems and and some equipment, and go from there. Thanks. <laughs>